Oh man, I want that for my build. How do I get it? Hi, Cizrin here, and today I wanted to make a video about target farming in Diablo 4, and does it need target farming? So, if you were making a build in Diablo 4 and planning out what you wanted, you might have run into one or two issues. Maybe there were some legendary aspects that you couldn't get, or maybe your build needed a unique item. A big problem that druids are running into right now. So, why is that such a big problem in Diablo 4? So Diablo 4 has a really good system where every dungeon will have a legendary aspect. However, not every aspect is in the dungeon, like some of them are drop only. And then you have some builds that really want some drop only uniques and you don't really have anything you can do to get uniques in particular because you can't gamble uniques with obols. So the only thing you can do is do the uh, Helltide farming and hope that you get a unique. So far, I haven't had a single unique out of Helltides, and while there are some people that have, it is obviously quite rare. And with the Obol Gambling, they did think about whether you should be able to get uniques from it, but you can't, apparently. So, that leaves very little target farming in Diablo 4. So, some target farming that is there, there are elites, like for example, there is a crossbow that's really good, they'll drop at like 840 item power. Uh, the problem with the 840 item power things that drop from the rares is that they also have only three stats and they are preset, right? They aren't like completely random. So these often end up being just starter items. And while they are target farmable and really, really good and can start your build off to a good start when you're starting world tier four, a lot of people are missing even basic target farming like in Diablo 2. So in Diablo 2, you had things that you could do repeatedly. For example, you could do Chaos Sanctuary or Travancore for high runes. You had Mephisto had like a pool of uniques that you could drop. And then you had, while there were things that could drop anywhere, if you spent one or two days farming Nightmare and Daryl, you had a pretty big chance of dropping a Stone of Jordan. Uh, I myself have farmed probably somewhere like 30 to 50 Stone of Jordans. And most of those were from Nightmare and Daryl. Oh! Oh, I got a soy! Oh my god! I have one IRL! Oh my god, dude! And the way that works in Diablo 2 is that all the loot tables are public. So something might only have like a small percentage chance higher. And it usually works in the form of that the, there are other things that can't drop from this boss and thus limiting the loot table. Now, Diablo 4 has very little of that so far, at least as far as we know. And there are other ways to solve this. Last Epoch has a very interesting system that when you're doing their equivalent of a mapping system or a rift system or whatever you want to call it, when, when you're doing the last Epoch equivalent of the endgame system, it actually shows you, okay, in this timeline, you're going to have a more likely chance of dropping helmets or maybe helmets and gloves. And um, then within that, there's also like this specific timeline will reward you with a bunch of helmets. This will reward you with weapons etc. And um, then there will even be sub things like this will give you unique or unique and set item, etc. So there's a lot of really good target farming in here and Last Epoch very often gets praised for their target farming and their loot system in general. Path of Exile has another system in the form of divination cards and bosses where the bosses drop their set amount of like they'll have a pool. The equivalent would be let's say that there were five or six different uh, uniques or legendaries that Lilith could drop and then there would be different drop rates. Maybe one rare item that has one or two percent drop rate and some more common ones that are what you're most likely to get. Lilith in Diablo 4 doesn't really drop anything good seeing as we've now seen people have been killing her quite a decent amount with not really much dropping. It's mostly the fact that you get a really cool cosmetic. It is quite ugly but it's, it's cool that it is exclusive, right? And Path of Exile also has this divination card system. This is basically item shards created by supporters of the game. So you could basically say um, there's a specific unique item for your build that might have a divination card that drops in a specific area. Then you just target farm that specific area. It might take you a week. It might take you a month. But, you know, eventually you will get there. Oh, it's done. It's over. So I guess the discussion here is... Could Diablo 4 benefit from something like this? 
I, I think it's quite easy for Diablo 4 to have something like this in the form of different dungeons just having a slightly higher chance to drop all rarities of, of a specific thing. Like, let's say, for example, the um, Champion's Demise dungeon could focus on dropping more helmets, more gloves, and more legs than other dungeons, and then maybe, like, you know, less of some other things. And thus, if you really need a unique or a legendary aspect that's more common on that, say you really need the, the Druid helmet or something like that, then that's the dungeon you would farm and you would have a higher chance. We're obviously also seeing, because of a bug, even bigger problems for Druids right now, where Druids are also dropping barbarian uniques instead of their own uniques so that's frustrating for a lot of druids that are trying uh to get the items they need we've had a lot of druids uh, one guy in my chat said he was level 92 and he's only been doing nightmare sigils which have a slightly higher chance obviously at the end of the dungeon you can get uniques and stuff as a reward uh, and he still doesn't have the druid unique he wants so you know it's pretty hard especially since it's not really obtainable in other classes right you're not going to get this while playing a rogue or while getting a sork. You know, we're not completely without solutions here. And that's a similar thing we do to what we call league starters in Path of Exile. Whenever I'm designing one of those, I make sure that there, there are no uniques in the build that are rare. If, if it's trade league, then you have some more leeway because you can trade in Path of Exile. You don't have that option in Diablo 4, uh, at least for legendary aspects and uniques. You can still trade for rare items, but that's obviously not entirely build enabling. And you might have seen a lot of people have been putting, oh, what helmet should I use in this build? Well, you should be using a Shaco, which is, you know, pretty much unobtainable at this point. And uh, there has been maybe two drops. So outside of Helltides and Ovals, there's not much target farming in Diablo 4. And I wanted to make like an open-ended question. Would you like to see any form of target farming in Diablo 4, like a way to progress towards something that you need for a build? Maybe you've seen somebody do something really cool and you want to do the same. And maybe you don't want the answer to be like, just kill a bunch of monsters and hope it drops. And three weeks or three months later, maybe you've got it. So what type of target farming would you like to see? And this might be something that you will get with seasons in Diablo 4. They've said that they're going to have very robust and beefy seasons. I take them at their word and think, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get bigger seasons than Path of Exile. It's a larger team with a larger budget. So it'd be really cool to see them really knock it out of the park in season one and do something really large. Obviously, a lot of people have been very negative, joking about, oh, maybe we'll get two treasure goblins. I don't think that'll be the case. I think we're going to see something really special, potentially even a lot larger than the Path of Exile leagues that we have seen. That's what I really want to see here. Um, I, I, For my part, I think uh, target farming would be a very good thing. I think a first step would be, obviously, they could add a league mechanic around target farming, but even an easy thing would be just dungeons having a larger chance and then saying like this dungeon uh drops more helmets gloves and, and lengths this drop uh, more rings and amulets etc so that you have like you have such a large amount of dungeons and this also resolves another problem a lot of people are like oh man everybody is farming one dungeon and just repeating that over and over again and this also solves that if you have different reasons to be in different dungeons outside of just xp per hour then you know it's less of a problem. It's like, yeah, you're getting really high XP per hour, but you're not getting that amulet that you need or the glove you need. Because the less there is in a game, the more it'll devolve down to, I need XP. That's all I care about. But either way, I just wanted to make this quick video. I've been really enjoying Diablo 4. I've been very surprised about how many people are anti-feedback and just think they should leave the game exactly the way it is. I obviously don't agree with that. I think every game that I've ever played could uh, deal with feedback and grow and get better. Really excited for the future of Diablo 4 and I hope you guys are enjoying it and having a blast. Either way, thanks for watching. Sub if you liked the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.